Welcome into Pittsburgh Steelers Talk by Chat Sports. Hope all of Steel City and beyond is gearing up to have a fantastic weekend with the final four coming at you on Saturday. But on today's show, we're breaking down the latest Pittsburgh Steelers news and rumors. That's why you subscribe to the channel. We have you covered with the best Steelers coverage here on YouTube. A signing we want to start off with. Good veteran safety making his way to Pittsburgh to play under Mike Tomlin. Carl Joseph, the longtime safety, signing a deal with Pittsburgh. I don't think that this, eliminates the possibility of the Steelers targeting a safety in the second round. And if that's the case, there are going to be some really good safeties on the board in the second round potentially for Pittsburgh. So with that, let's take a look at some of the names. Jalen Petrie, really good safety out of Baylor. I like him, but I like Jaquan Brisker a little bit more. I think he's just the better strong safety. Of course, people in Pittsburgh, very familiar with Brisker, played at Lackawanna College, Junior College, was really good. It's one of the best junior colleges in the entire country. Transfers to Penn State and was yet another one of the pro prospects to come out of that program. Other guys to keep an eye on, Kirby Joseph out of Illinois, as well as Brian Cook for Cincinnati. Over time, Cincinnati under Luke Fickle, they played some really good defensive football. I like him coming from that scheme, potentially going to the Steelers scheme. I think it could be a solid fit, but my number one option among these four players, it is Jaquan Brisker. As for Tyron Matthew, it's looking more and more likely that he might sign with the team leading up to the NFL draft or maybe after the draft. He wants to kind of canvas the landscape, see which teams address safety in the NFL draft, and potentially pick his destination after that. Of course, Tyron Matthew, an all-pro player, multi-time pro bowler, one of the best safeties in the National Football League, and one of the best available free agents still on the market. And Pittsburgh has been rumored to be interested in the Honey Badger. So, what would you rather do before we continue on on today's show? Would you rather sign Tyron Matthew? Would you rather draft the safety? Of course, financially, you save a lot more money targeting one of those safeties that we talked about or another DB in the second round. Let me know. S for sign, the Honey Badger, D for the draft. And while you're down there, getting those votes and subscribe to the channel. Help us get to 11,000 subscribers. We have a plethora, a bevy of channels here at Chat Sports, and under the Chat Sports umbrella, Pittsburgh Steelers talk one of the hottest in the company's history in terms of new channels really growing. That's all thanks to you. Subscribe to the channel for multiple videos per week. That's not behind a paywall. It's all free what we do here. Bleacher Report released their latest mock draft here are the selections going to Pittsburgh. Some interesting names, some notable names, and then going after a specific player like Sam Howell at quarterback would obviously impact this football team moving forward into the future. So with pick number 20, Bleacher Report has Trevor Penning, offensive tackle out of Northern Iowa going to Pittsburgh. He's been climbing up some draft boards. I think it's a little bit of a reach, but he certainly has potential from that small school. Darian Kendrick, cornerback out of Georgia. That defense was littered with a bunch of pro prospects. Darian Kendrick, one of them. Sam Howe, the most fascinating selection of this mock draft going to Pittsburgh at pick number 84. To take him here, I think it'd be good value. I don't think he's going to last until pick 84. I think a quarterback needy team will select Sam Howe before that. But if you get him at pick number 84, I really like the value and the potential of him maybe being a starter after a couple of years of development behind Mitchell Trubisky. Lastly, pick number 138, Bo Melton, wide receiver out of Rutgers. Since Greg Schiano took that gig, he's really helped turn that program into a respectable program there in the Big Ten. Bo Melton, a big reason for that. As for Penning. It's a good pick, and I think it fills a need. Like I said, it's a little bit of a reach, but the Pittsburgh Steelers need to get better along that offensive line. As for Darian Kendrick, I think he can play. Some others a little bit skeptical. Some might say it's a reach to take Kendrick with that pick. As for Sam Howe, like I said, I don't think he's going to be available this late for Pittsburgh, but if that's the case, Going into 2021, we were talking about him and Spencer Rattler as two of the best quarterbacks in college football. He tailed off a little bit after a little bit of a sluggish season. He does remind me a little bit of Baker Mayfield with his skill set and his size at 6'1", 220. Bo Melton, 5'11", 195. The production was certainly there last year in a very good conference. 55 grabs, 618 yards, three touchdowns, and a long of 57. You look at that mock draft from Bleacher Report and you see the 
players slotted to Pittsburgh. What do you think about that mock draft? Once again, chime into the comment section. You be the judge. Treat the comment section like a sports talk radio call in line and let us know what you think of that Bleacher Report mock and who they have the Steelers selecting A, B, C, D, or F. You let me know in the comment section down below. I'll give it a B minus. I think there are some solid players on there. I like Kendrick. I like Hal Penning. I like his upside. I think he's a little bit of a project. I want to see how he translates to the NFL and transitions to the National Football League after playing at Northern Iowa. But there you go. That's my grade. You know what I give a high grade to? These shirts to my right. You can get them right now thanks to our friends at Fanatics. Go to chatsports.com slash black and yellow. Yeah, Wiz Khalifa. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Not black and gold like the great debate has taken place on this channel over the last couple of weeks. Either way, support your squad. And if the NFL shop has shirts that state black and yellow, I guess those who voted on our community tab that it's black and yellow and not black and gold they get the dub, the others take the yell. Either way, you'll pick up dubs if you pick up this shirt at chatsports.com slash black and yellow. No, those were not gang signs. All right, next up on today's show, Steelers day two and day three quarterback options. Who could Pittsburgh go after on the second day of the NFL draft, maybe even in round three? Let's take a look at some of the more notable names. Of course, it's all going to come down to how the board falls if there are a lot of quarterbacks who go off the board in the top 10 selections, that, of course, impacts Pittsburgh, maybe at number 20, and then later on if they don't address quarterback at number 20 in day two and day three. Desmond Ritter of Cincinnati, marvelous career in terms of intangibles, reminds me of Dak Prescott as well as Russell Wilson with what he can do on the football field as a quarterback. His resume is certainly impressive, but, of course, he did play in the American Athletic Conference, went to Cincinnati, and wasn't able to to flash his quarterback abilities against Alabama in the college football playoff. I think he'd be a good selection back half of the first round, maybe even the second round, 65% completion percentage. I love the experience that he compiled. I also like how many games he won, and that cannot be overlooked. 30 touchdowns and 8 picks last year. Those numbers ain't no joke, and they're better than Sam Howe. Sam Howe is more of a project than Desmond Ritter. I think Ritter, a little bit more of a proven thing with how Jekyll and Hyde career Really, the high points were very high. The low points were certainly head-scratching. Last year, 24 touchdowns, 9 interceptions for a down year for him and UNC. The completion percentage less than 63. I don't love it. Carson Strong certainly has the numbers coming from Nevada. Completed 70% of his passes, 4,100 yards, 36 touchdowns, and 8 picks. But he, too does have some question marks. Matt Corral, I worry about how he can decipher and pick apart defenses. He played in that system under Lane Kiffin. The talent in terms of his arm strength and arm ability are certainly there. Has a slighter frame, though, and I worry about him deciphering defenses. 68% completion percentage is solid, but a lot of those predetermined throws, 20 touchdowns, 5 picks with a good supporting cast. And then Caleb Ellaby. Out of Western Michigan, climbing up some draft boards. He does have some physical ability. Last year's numbers, 23 tutties, 6 interceptions, completed a little less than 64% of his passes. How will he perform with better professional players around him? That's the big question for him. I can assure you, though, he will be available on either day two or day three. Ritter, Howe, Strong, Corral cannot say the same for those first four players. Who's your favorite day two, day three NFL quarterback prospect? This quarterback class, certainly a little bit lighter than it's been in years past. What'd you say, producer Jeremy? Mike Tomlin did say, we're going to try to address quarterback at the NFL draft. That's something that we've been talking about here on Pittsburgh Steelers Talk, and that's why you subscribe, baby, because we keep you up to date with all things Steelers better than anybody else out there. We have opinions. We have hot takes. We have information and audience engagement. Join the party. Subscribe today. Hope you all have a fantastic weekend.